Well, I as mentioned in the last video that uh, we're going to take a little field trip today. We're going to go see my friend Fisher at Bradley University, and he's going to explain to us the lost wax uh, method of casting bronze. And also, he's agreed to sell me some of the uh, scrap from the students' work. So it should be a really fun day. Bradley University is located in Peoria, Illinois, which is the largest city on the Illinois River. The surrounding area a population of just shy of a half a million people. It's about a 25 minute drive from my shop in Eureka. Here we are. Now I can just find a parking place. Lucky me, it looks like I've got one almost right here in front of the art department. I received my MFA in sculpture from Bradley in 1978 and I have been a visiting artist here and also taught several adjunct classes over the years. This art center was built long after my tenure as a grad student, so I'm excited to get a close look at their foundry. I haven't seen Fisher since the pandemic, so I'm looking forward to catching up with him. Foundry area at Bradley. Um, we love our foundry, by the way, because our furnace is actually at four levels, which makes it easier to take the crucible out of the uh, furnace. Um, and when we're ready to pour, we will turn off the uh, the blower here. We'll open Fisher, up the Fisher Stoltz is a sculptor and professor of art, and is the sculpture department head. Fisher is a nationally recognized sculptor. His primary works are in stainless steel. However, he also uses cast metals and stone in the creation of his sculptures. Fisher received his Master of Fine Arts degree from the University of Georgia and has studied and taught sculpture abroad in Italy. I've had the pleasure of knowing Fisher for 27 years since his appointment to Bradley's art department. We've exhibited together many times, and I regard him as an outstanding sculptor, friend, and colleague. After a brief tour of the foundry, Fisher and I sat down, and he ran through the lost wax casting method. Uh, so we're um, making our uh, sculptures out of wax, and then we're adding a feeder system to them. That feeder system we call a sprue system, and it has a cup and a main gate, and then it has branches that go directly into the wax piece. That piece is dipped in a slurry and then coated with fine sand and coarse sand and successive coats. Right now we're doing six coats with the new product called Just Dip and then doing a seal coat that includes no sand. At that point, the mold dries and we put it into a burnout kiln um, we have that kiln about a thousand degrees and um, the wax kind of flash melts out of it and then we leave it in for about an hour and a half um, and that gets rid of all the carbon inside the, the ceramic shell mold. We bring the molds back into the uh, foundry. We put them into a uh, pouring uh, cage and we have a box cover that has ends wool to keep it warm and preheat those molds while we're melting bronze um, so that uh, they begin to 
kind of glow orange inside, about 1300 degrees or so the molds are. Um, meanwhile, we're heating the bronze in the furnace. Um, when that gets to be a little over 2000 degrees, it's ready to pour. One of the ways that you can check uh, the temperature of your bronze is if you have a, a steel rod, we have about a half inch steel rod that we preheat um, over the bronze for about seven full seconds to make sure that there's no moisture in it. And then there's a quick dip below the surface of the bronze and it's pulled out and you can inspect it. Um, if it's coated with a thin lacy coat, kind of like baby Swiss cheese, that is the ideal temperature for pouring. Um, it's a fluid, but it's not so hot that it's going to um, uh, burn and shrink inside the molds. So we can test that if the um, stick comes out with no metal on it, it's too hot. If it uh, coats it fully thick, then it's too cold. And so we can uh, find the correct temperature without a pyrometer.
also, um, after the uh, pieces are poured, they need to cool for generally a, at least about an hour and a half, um, but it can be longer than that. And then the, um, the shell is broken away from the, uh, the bronze uh, piece with its feeder system still attached. That's done with um, chisels and hammers primarily, um, a little bit of picking and wire brushing, and we get as many of the uh, large chunks of the um, ceramic shell off of the pieces that we can, then we'll be able to put it into a sandblast cabinet and blast fully the, um, the metal until it's clean. After it's clean, uh, we can cut off those sprue systems, an angle grinder with a, a cutoff wheel, four and a half inch. The cutoff wheel followed by uh, a bit of sanding with flat discs and then blending in the surface with a number of different processes. Some of the pieces that uh, we cast are fairly large, very large, we up to life-size pieces, but um, uh, pieces that um, are um, cast in parts and need to be put together, assembled, uh, we do with a TIG welder. For instance, if there is a, uh, an area of shrinkage uh, or there's a, um, a hole where um, some ceramic shell um, maybe float it off in the uh, bronze and we uncover that, we can clean it out and then fill back into those, those little imperfections and again blend it uh, so that you really can't tell that uh, anything was ever um, wrong with the surface. Well, that was an amazingly fun day. Uh, it was really great to be back into a foundry and seeing metal being poured again. Uh, it was really a lot of fun. It really sort of got my juices running about pouring some bronze myself. So I want to thank Fisher and his studio tech, Jackie, for hosting me and allowing me to come in and observe. And also for selling me uh, some bronze. So I have here uh, 40 pounds of bronze and you can see there's a variety of different sizes so like this is one of the off cuts of one of the pouring cups um, and you can see they're all pretty clean and sandblasted uh, there's a variety of sizes in here uh, if the metal gets too hot uh, what's a good idea is to have smaller pieces like this so that you can put that into the crucible and then it'll cool it down um, so anyway, um, the 40 pounds should be plenty for the uh, small parts that I need to cast. So the next step is um, we need to test fire that furnace.
purpose of this first firing is to slowly heat up the furnace, which I'm doing with a really low flame. And this will cause the residual moisture that's in the refractory to be driven off. Now I cast this over six weeks ago, and you can see there's quite a bit of moisture being driven off. Before I use the crucible to melt any metal, I need to temper it. So basically, to temper it, I'll slowly heat up the crucible empty in the furnace around 400 degrees for about an hour. With this low flame and the lid open, that's close to what the temperature was burning at. After about an hour and a half, all the moisture was gone, so I closed the lid and slowly raised the temperature close to the maximum for casting. Well, now that the furnace got up to close to its operating temperature, I went ahead and shut it down. And now I'm going to let it do is to slowly cool down. And that should uh, have that uh, crucible all tempered uh, and be ready for casting. So our next uh, step is to get some patterns made. So that's what next episode will be about is pattern making. And hopefully we might be able to get our first pour in. So as you always, thanks for watching The Art of Boat Building. Mm -hmm.